Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I seem to have a nasty habit of getting to be the first speaker at things I get invited to, so uh, hopefully I keep your attention for the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, firstly, thank you to the team at CEDA for inviting me to speak at this event. Uh, it's my first time speaking at a Queensland Economic Forum, uh, but as a proud Queenslander, I'm glad to have a much uh, growing exposure and involvement in what we're going to be doing here in Queensland for decades to come, quite literally. It's also truly wonderful to see so many companies and organisations that are interested to learn about companies like Rai Matal and the other speakers here today, uh, and about our plans in Australia and more colloquially here in Queensland. Rai Matal is in the fortunate position to be part of creating an entirely new industry here in Australia. Led from Ipswich in southeast Queensland, that will become an enabler for Australian defence capability, an exporter of defence technology into global markets, and perhaps most importantly, an employer of our youth in design and manufacturing for years to come. Today I'll cover three main themes about how this has come about. Firstly, how federal and state government investment and policies are driving an agenda for economic prosperity. Secondly, how companies like Rheinmetall are marrying this with a strategy for global growth. And third, what this means for Queensland and Australia more broadly in the coming decades. It's important that I open with the defence industry context in Australia and why this is important for economic development in Queensland and Australia more broadly. Without doubt, we are right now in the largest uplift and investment in defence capability in Australia in a generation, across all of our domains, whether it's sea, land, air or cyber. And over the last three years, we've also seen a remarkable strengthening of federal government policy in this regard, providing the impetus for Australia to realise its global potential for the design, development and manufacture of defence products and services. Perhaps most important of this is the announcement three years ago now of close to $200 billion of investment that will be spent over the next decade, described in the Defence Integrated Investment Program. And one of the nice things about doing business in Australia in the industry context is that much of it is publicly available and it's remarkable how many companies don't take the time to read it because it lays out a wonderful blueprint of how industry and defence and government together can prosper and grow what is truly a national endeavour. But this has also been strengthened with a set of underlying policies and enablers. Good policy without action is just a good idea. Firstly, the Defence Industry Policy Statement, which for the first time formally recognised industry, and Australian industry in particular, as a fundamental input to defence capability. Then some critical enablers, the creation of the Centre for Defence Industry Capability, the Next Generation Technologies Fund to motivate and create an innovation incubation for Australian ideas, and strengthening of already existing global supply chain agreements with defence global primes like Rheinmetall. And then more recently, release of the Defence Export Strategy and Defence Industrial Capability Plan, providing blueprints for a sustainable industrial capability in Australia and encouraging global investment into the Australian environment. Defence has also seen its growing role and recognition that it can positively influence uh, Australian industry and exports. On the world stage, nothing quite beats an Australian soldier saying, this Australian kit saves my life, it helps me do my job well, you should buy it too. And we're seeing that nexus of the operator and the government adopting those policies to encourage that investment in Australia. And finally, we've also seen the recognition at the state government level that defence industry can be a key enabler for investment, employment and economic growth. For the first time, Every state and territory has its own department 
or team within a department charged with attracting and engaging with defence industry and defence to marry the two parts together. For Rheinmetall, this helped us accelerate our understanding of existing and nascent industry and company partners, and importantly, build the evidence that we could take back into our corporate boardroom in Germany to justify the export of core and sensitive technologies, products and services into a country, Australia, that can deliver to our exacting standards and quality. So we now see a state and national policy and investment framework within which industry can play its role to build an enduring sovereign industrial capability. It is, in short, a great time to be working within the defence space here in Australia, as an Australian. Let me turn now to the industry side of the equation and share some of Rheinmetall's experience when it comes to building an enduring national defence industry that can compete and win globally. Innovation and entrepreneurship are in Rheinmetall's DNA. Our heritage and technology started over 129 years ago to meet the dual national needs of the German nation in needing weapons and automotive technology. Our early automotive innovations were spun off and formed part of what became a, a small company you may know called BMW. But if Rheinmetall had rested on its laurels, we would have eventually become obsolete, beaten by the competition, without that ongoing investment in our own technology and tapping into innovation where it is available. Today, we are the largest defence company in Germany across munitions, weapons, vehicles, simulation, cyber security and homeland security. Our automotive business is a tier one supplier to all of the national and global marks around the world and we have factories and design occurring in Asia, Europe and the Americas. But in Australia, we've been a bit more of an enigma. If you look back 40 years or so, we were well regarded and successfully imported into Australia German munitions. Today, we're recognised for our trucks and tanks, using a colloquialism. Right now, we're currently halfway through the delivery of 2,500 high mobility protected trucks to the Australian Army, establishing a modern logistics backbone that will ensure the Australian Defence Force can do its operations locally and overseas. Those trucks are finished and delivered from Wacol right here in southeast Queensland. Two weeks ago, the Minister for Defence Industry, Christopher Pine, announced here in Queensland that the Commonwealth will add just over a further 1,000 trucks to that program, allowing us to continue to build what is a proven capability for the Australian Army. And back in March, if you recall, the Prime Minister announced that Rheinmetall will deliver a fleet of 211 Boxer combat reconnaissance vehicles for the Australian Army. For those who are unfamiliar with this program, Rheinmetall will deliver the most capable, survivable and adaptable wheeled armoured fighting vehicle available in the global market today. With the selection of Boxer as the Defence Force's new combat reconnaissance vehicle, we've also mapped out a vision for industry that goes far beyond build to print. Working with Australian companies and the academic community, Rheinmetall will establish a sovereign industrial capability that will be sustainable and provide Australian exports to the world. And we've built this on five interrelated pillars. First is the transfer of existing high quality technology and capability from Germany to Australia. Step it up. Over that same time frame, invest in local capability, both within Rheinmetall and with local industry partners and academia. Establish through that a technology and product development program which allows us to create Australian intellectual property, which then becomes available for our home users, but also to the world market. And through that, opening a pathway for Australian scientists, engineers and entrepreneurs to develop intellectual property for years to come that remains Australian IP. And then deliver opportunities for those Australian companies through our industry networks to access those global markets. 
We use the first step, the technology transfer, as the step up. And at the same time as we're bringing the technology into Australia, we send Australians into the existing design and manufacturing houses in Germany over the next two years, so they can build up the skills, the experience and the networks, so that when they come back, they are the custodians and able to efficiently use that material here in Australia. Our industry partners will stretch across the nation and there'll be substantial jobs and opportunities in Queensland, both in southeast Queensland and predominantly up the coast, uh, and around Australia. In fact, over the last two years, we've taken the opportunity to take our boxer combat vehicle around Australia and up through Queensland to expose it to over 500 companies around Australia, engage with each of those companies, understand what they can do and how they can play a role in our design and manufacturing solutions and where they aren't quite ready now but have something which is interesting and unique, how we can work with them to bring them into our industry network. And the surprising thing is, in many locations around Australia, we identified companies that can produce to the same quality, cost and performance of many of the products from Germany. And this is actually a point of difference for Australian industry on the national stage, on the, on the global stage. We are in fact globally competitive at low volume, high quality, highly complex bespoke systems. And it's something which is counterintuitive and it's something that we as a nation unfortunately have convinced ourselves that we can't do or shouldn't do. Defence is also one of the few employment sectors where we can create highly skilled and generally better paid jobs in regional towns as part of a push to operate, maintain and upgrade these increasingly complex systems as far forward with the soldiers, the sailors and the airmen that are operating the equipment. So you can see that there'll be a nucleus of uh, complex systems, highly skilled technicians, uh, simulation and training at places like Townsville and Shoalwater Bay where by providing the capability there, it avoids the need to bring a lot of equipment back to Brisbane or to other depots around capital cities and ensure that we maintain a high level of availability and serviceability for our Australian Defence Force. And with the continuing trends of flexible working arrangements and perhaps more, more exciting online collaboration tools, I see this as an area where we can get that skilling out into the regional towns and will be an employment growth in the coming years. And is there a measurable benefit of good policy and targeted investment? And I believe our Ipswich based centre of excellence that we'll be establishing in the next few years is a good case in point. When Rheinmetall developed our original Australian industry capability solution for the Boxer program three years ago now, it was in a time where defence and government had convinced itself that something built overseas is better than something built here. And the states didn't realise or have a coordinated approach to tapping into the potential economic benefit of those programs. So industry developed a build overseas, finish in Australia model that responded to this policy vacuum. We gave the Australian customer what they asked for, not what they need. Roll forward to today, and with the coordinated policy focus that has been launched over the last three years, we're giving the Australian customer what they have now asked for. Australia will become an integral source of technology and products for the Rheinmetall Group, and will export that into the global market with forecast opportunities that we're going after right now in the tens of billions of dollars from Australia. And by partnering with the Queensland Government, we will create much more than a final assembly and service line. We're creating a truly global centre of excellence that will become part of Australia's national infrastructure. This new facility, which will become operational in 2020, will be Rheinmetall's design and manufacturing home for the region, not just Australia, Southeast Asia. It will be a centre where we design and manufacture vehicles, turrets, armour, electro-optics, electronics, simulation and other, and other advanced systems. But not only that, it will also be a true design house. 
It will have prototyping workshops, the largest electromagnetic chamber in the region, which allows us to test how robust and integral complex electronics are against uh, emissions and attacks. Prototyping workshop and vehicle test track. This is a centre where defence, industry and universities can come together to test new ideas, to confirm capability benefits, to make sure that we're on a path from a crazy idea to a fantastic capability that can be commercialised and sold. And all the while, having that Australian intellectual property remain in Australia. So from where I'm standing right now, Australia has all of the ingredients for a strong, resilient and enduring international global industry that can compete and win on the global stage. As a defence industry, we will be able to contribute to that Australian defence capability, use that to then go after and win global markets and be an employer for our youth, particularly in the science, technology and manufacturing domains. And I believe we're at the perfect moment in time where we have the convergence of good government policy, capital investment in Australia with real export opportunities in the defence landscape, and a growing recognition of our industrial and scientific strengths in that arena. And regional Australia will also have a significant role in building this capability. We chose our, we chose our centre in Ipswich by no accident. It allows us to tap into the breadth of skills and industry in the Gold Coast, Darling Downs, Ipswich and South East Queensland and provide a home basing point for work and training that will necessarily occur in Townsville, Shoalwater Bay and other establishments with the Australian Defence Force. We're excited by these opportunities ahead and are clear-eyed about the challenges we face and we look forward to building that with local industry and building up a competent advanced manufacturing workforce here in Queensland and here in Australia. Rheinmetall entered Australia 40 years ago because it was a great place to export German technology. What we now see is that Australia is a great place to export Australian ingenuity and we're proud to be part of that journey. Thank you. Mm -hmm.